Hello, I'm Peter Alcock and my guest today is Norman Harrison. He has kindly offered to talk about his life leading to his involvement in U3A. Welcome to our U3A video portrait series, Norman. But I'd like to start uh, way back. It, it all started with, with, with my daughter and she wanted me to write a, a, a bit of an aid memoir for her on uh, my experience as a child of the, of the war. And after I'd been doing it for about 10 seconds, it dawned on me that I didn't know any difference. I didn't know what it was like to be a child that wasn't in the war. So I, I, all my views from being, you know, from, from when I could start to remember to... Well, I, I mean, my memory goes back to about... I was about four, I would think. I, I can't think of any much before then. It was, it was... I thought it was great fun myself. I mean, we, we had a wonderful time. And when we used to have the big bombing raids, uh, like the Mayblitz in Liverpool, uh, I mean the, the the stuff we used to collect after the um, after the raids was unbelievable. I mean, mm. ordinary sh shrapnel wasn't worth much, mm. but if you could find a piece of the landmine rope, that mm. was pretty, that was a big prize. That was, you know. So wartime yeah. wartime Liverpool then was like a playground for you as a well. It was if that's right. Yeah, but it was. Mm. A, but what people don't, what people forget was it was a relatively short period, mm. because once the May Blitz went past, mm. uh, Germany swung her uh, 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 efforts towards the more the manufacturing side than the than the shipping side, mm -hmm. and uh, I moved on to. Uh, I was very fortunate in that uh, I had a mother who was absolutely determined that I was going to go to grammar school, whether mm. I liked it or not. So your father had a bit of advice for you when you left school. Well, if you, that's a very polite way of putting it, Peter, very polite. Um, dad, 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 dad and I had a reasonable relationship, but my dad had, had only one interest in life other than my mother. No, Dad, um, dad I, I, I'd always made a, a, a little bit of a vow that um, I wouldn't really go into a pub until I was 18. He said, uh, come on, we're going for a pint. So we went for a pint. And I sat down. Now, he was the mildest guy you've ever met. He had a temper, but he, he never used it very much. And uh, this time, he sat me down, he said, right, he said, you're a lazy bastard. He said, uh, it's time you got off your arse and went, went out and earned some money and looked after yourself. Now, at that time, um, National Service was in. So uh, I, I, I signed up. Um, actually, uh, I mean, I caused a bit of a sensation because I signed up for 22 years. <laughs> but uh, it was you had a guarantee you could come out every three. So you thought you were joining the reserve, but you ended up in the full-time army. I was. I went, I went to the full-time. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I went for. Oh no, I, I went in with me. I was wide open, mm -hmm. wide open. I, I knew I was going in full-time. A lot, lot of lasting friendships from that period in your life. Funny thing is, I've got one left. Mm. Uh, he's. He's, he and I were um, we were in, we were in the army together for about uh, two years. I, I was in three. He was in three as well, but we we overlapped for two years, and uh, we're still we're still pals now. So there's been quite a few turning points in your life, I, I gather, and uh, it's like when you see an opportunity, you just grab hold of it. Well, what uh, what what I've seen what I've seen of it is you see, people say. Oh, well, I, I had this plan for my life. You know, you get these balls where you go bing and, you, and they fire them round the... <laughs> yeah. What do you call it? Mm. Well, that's, that's, that's mm. how I planned mm. my life. So, so bouncing right? from I here, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. The bouncing. Next, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, though I did start off at Shell uh, with every intention of uh, staying there. I, 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 lo I loved the time I was at Shell. I, mm. I really enjoyed it. I, I worked on fuels. Mm. Um, that was the chemistry side of it, was it? The chemistry it? Yeah, side of it, yeah. Mm. You see, when I went to the army, the um, one big advantage about being a regular, you could pick your trade. Mm. I got called up again for, for the sewers due. Mm. I had to go back to the army. I, this was about the time of the sewers crisis? Yeah, that was 1956, mm. yeah. Mm. I was in for 111 days. Okay. Um, but... Uh, you sorted it out. <laughs> well, we, we got as far as the Empire Midhurst from... Um, we left uh, Barry Dock, mm. complete with two of our mobile labs. We were steaming down towards the Bay of Biscay, 
and suddenly the sun went on the other bare well. I thought, what's happening here? And we, tur we turned round and we were heading back. <laughs> it was all, uh, all over. All over, yeah. I had a pretty good time. I, 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 I got married um, when I was 20, something or other, 23, 24. And um, I, I was having the time of my life. I didn't do any, I, know, I just had a good social life. I had a, a young wife who was happy to come with me. And we used to go dancing a lot of me. And then bingo, it suddenly dawned on me, hang on a minute, there must be more to life than this. And lo and behold, there was. And uh, next thing I know is I had a daughter. I got a, a, what they call a licentious in, um, in, in, in the uh, field of chemistry from uh, the Royal Society. And then um, I was cruising along. And um, then, as you say, various opportunities suddenly popped up out of the blue. It, while I was there, I, I taught myself uh, water engineering. Mm. The boss came in to me and said, Norman, he said, I'm sorry, he said, but you're the only chemist I've got in my, in my little department, in my, his, his department. Did that and blew me down. Uh, the fellow, that, uh, he, he was off for months. Qualified in waste. Qualified in that waste, yeah, <laughs> for that. That did me. Then by accident, I got involved with um, the 1964 Act. Mm. Um, the, this was to do with pollution of rivers in yeah, Britain? Yeah, but mm. what we were doing, the inches used a, a thing where everything that went to a, way, a landfill site had to have a, a chitty, mm. had to have a, flat, mm. have a form describing what it was and all that sort of. mm. And they were traced, followed through. And uh, they, I, I was asked at, at Shell, would a designer form to do it? So I designed the form to do it. Mm. And I'm happy to say, mm. it's the one they use nationally. Is that right? <laughs> well done. It, it yeah. was ta taken up by, by people. And mm. So that was, um, that was a nice little, nice little earner. But well, it wasn't, didn't earn me anything, but yeah. it's, mm. it, was a, it was a good thing. Mm. So did that lead you on to a job that, uh, based on a trip to the United Nations, was that...? Oh, oh, the, oh that, that, was, that was interesting. I'd, um, oh, over a period of time, I'd, I'd got myself inv very involved in solid waste disposal. Mm. And I was with the... In other words, uh, the, uh, what, the, sewage, sewage? Yeah, with the National Association of Waste Disposal yeah, yeah. contractors. And eventually, I was beca I became a director of the end uh, of the NORDAC. Mm. Um, but but um, my my boss, or the fellow who was to be my boss, uh, he approached me. Uh, I was working at the Water Authority, and uh, we'd done all the licensing. We'd licensed all the sites, so we'd done nine hundred sites in the northwest of England. And uh, this guy came and said to me, he "said Would you fancy a job in the private sector?" So uh, I thought, well, you know, see what happens. Anyway, I talked to him and he, he, he came out with a, a, what I call, what I thought was a reasonable deal. So uh, I took it. Uh, it turned out that uh, I'd hit a very big bump in the, in the, in the theatre of life. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, dear lady, uh, Margaret Thatcher, had decided that uh, she was going to offload all the nationalised industries she could to the private sector and blow me down. I found I'd been employed by a, a firm that was actually part of a nationalised mm. industry. So Maggie Thatcher did you a bit of a favour? So they, oh, they yeah. certainly did. They, they sold the company off. Mm. Uh, all the employees were offered the first bite of the, of the cherry. We took our, our share of the, of the shares and uh, we won't talk about how much they multiplied by, but we had a lot of notes at the end of it. Um, and uh, we, uh, so it, it, it set me up for life. Mm -hmm. that, that, just that one move. Um, it, was, uh, it meant that I could, uh, I had, had a few bobs. So when the time came to retire or got nearer, I had, I had a little lump in the bank. So how did you get to the, the UN? Conference in New York. What? what oh well, what listen. There? The, the boss, uh, he was he was a great guy for publicity. Mm. And there was a firm in uh, the states called Waste Management Limited. And we were also called Waste Management Limited. Mm. 
But we were the English ones, and they were the American ones. Now, he's been, being him, he saw uh, an opportunity here, you know. He thought, I'll get, I'll get our name in front of, the, in front of a lot of people. So he, he, he asked around amongst the directors in, the, in Waste Management uh, who would like to go to this conference. In, uh, it was in Washington, D.C. And uh, nobody put their head up. So what the hell are you, are you buggers? You know, the, it's all, all, all expenses paid. Mm -hmm. Go to this conference. But if it turns out to the biggest boring thing on earth, it doesn't matter. Um, so I, I stuck my hand up and said, yeah, let's have a go. So we, we went, I went over. First time I ever flew the Atlantic. I, I'd never flown that far before. And um, we got to... Um, the, we stayed in the, uh, near the State Department in, in Washington, D.C. And it was a big deal. It was, it was called the NATO CCMS. So how did the geology part of your career, how did, how did that uh, well, come about? The geology <coughs> came into that. While I was working at the Water Authority, I got the biggest shock of my life. I went to do this licensing business uh, here so it for the Water Authority, input to the licence, and they, they did a, a geological, geological report on all the sites, mainly based on hydrogeology, because that's what they were interested in. Where, where was the rubbish going, you know, and the things. So um, I got to, I, the, I remember the boss uh, at, the, at the Water Authority said to me, what do you know about um, you know, this business of uh, hydrogeology? And I, my answer was not guilty. I hadn't got a clue. Didn't know what he's talking about. And of course, I got so interested in the bloody thing I started to get more and more interested in mm -hmm. And that was 1980. Mm -hmm. And from 1980 onwards, geology has been mm -hmm. mainly my, my main interest in life. And then it got to the mid... Uh, towards the end of the sort of uh, 80s, and uh, I looked at my, the amount of money I had in the bank and I looked at potential incomes and things like that, and I thought, hang on a minute. I, could, I don't ask, what am I working for? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I decided, yeah, I'm going to retire. You retire then, so then you become a, so, thir a third ager. Well, I was 56. Yeah, yeah. And um, the uh, management here, she said, uh, it's all very well, you retired, but I'm going to retire as well. She was only 50. And then suddenly, out of the blue, I got the, the opportunity to go to Liverpool University. And uh, I got a... I was very lucky, I got, I got a... I got a grant for, so I did a, a BSc in um, geomorphology. Yeah, because a lot of um, mature age students are perhaps in their 30s or 40s, but you're well into your 50s when I you did your mature age. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was always quite, a joke. Quite unusual. I was <laughs> three times as old as most, of the, most of the students. Yeah. But I did a degree, and I passed that. I got that in '93, uh, and uh, just as I was leaving the. I packed all my gear up, mm. had two bagfuls of it, I was making my way out to the car. Mm. And this voice from upstairs suddenly shouted my name. Mm. And I turned around and said, what's up now, you know? Come here. And it was the head of the department. Mm. He said, uh, how do you fancy teaching? Okay. I said, I'm not, I'm not a teacher. I said, I'm, I'm a bloke who goes around doing things, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up teaching that for eight years. Okay. I was sitting... Uh, in um, Forest Place. I looked around and thought, God, this is a most uninteresting place. Nothing but bloody concrete. So, I, but being, having learnt from the past, I got involved with it. Your move to Australia wasn't uh, your first preference, I, I take it. It wasn't um, something that you really hankered to do. Uh, it just came about. As we've got cameras on us, I've got to be very polite, haven't I? No, I can't stand the place. I don't, I don't like it. I don't like being here. Getting back to you, 3A, um, what do you recall? I understand that you got here about when the Journal Up group started. Uh, what well, what do you recall about that? They, they, they advertised it um, and said that they were going to form a group in June. Uh, David Hutton was there. And he was the vice chairman of the council at the time. And uh, I knew David from the past. So he... He said, you know, have, have a look around. Anyway, I talked to people there, and disobeying everybody 
rule of the book, I volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've met some lovely people. Well, this has been a very interesting chat, Norman. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to particularly put on the record? <laughs> put on the record? Before we... Uh, yeah, please can have a ticket. Oh, no. you have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, thanks very much for the chat. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Norman. I'll shut up now. <laughs>